All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the third day of March, 2024. Flyers Daily, as always, presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Flyers, middle game of three games in four days, second of a back-to-back, and they get a win, a 4-2 win, over the Ottawa Senators at Wells Fargo Center. We talked about it in yesterday's episode, the Flyers record in Friday, Saturday, Sunday games. I asked Chris Terrian about players and weekend games before the game on the pregame show uh, last night before Flyers Senators. And he said, as a player, you don't even realize whether it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, anything like that. We tend to think of things in our lives on a Monday through Friday work week and weekends or whether you work weekends or whatever. Uh, We think of things in the rigidity of normal life. A pro athlete in season in a sport like hockey, basketball, or baseball thinks of things just as, hey, I'm in season. I play when the schedule says I play. It doesn't matter whether it's a Friday, Saturday. They don't go, hey, it's Friday, and we're off like happy hour. Like like They don't approach things like that. Not to say that the players don't go to happy hour, but uh, more maybe making more of that I did yesterday than needed to be made. Uh, but they hadn't been good over the on weekends over the last uh, couple of weeks and certainly since the new year. So uh, we talked about it, but they get a win on a Saturday. Maybe it's just day games on the weekends that can cause that kind of disruption to the daily schedule and the rigidity of the season. Uh, but they get a weekend win over the Ottawa Senators after Friday's game, which was very frustrating uh, for me. And I had said at the end of yesterday's episode that if they didn't come away with two points and I didn't care how they did it, I don't care if I didn't care if it was the prettiest game of the season, the ugliest game of the season or somewhere in between that, that I was going to be in a none too pleased mood. And good news is, is that we don't have to deal with that. Was it the prettiest game of the season? No. Was it the ugliest game of the season? No, it, it fell somewhere in between that. But there were some really good elements to the game. But let's get to the game first and foremost, uh, because the Flyers double up Ottawa, who had beaten the Flyers two times this year. Matter of fact, touched the Flyers up for 10 total goals in those previous two games. Now, one was game two of the season, and then another one here uh, much more recent. I think it was part of that Flyers five-game skid, if I recall, uh, against the Ottawa Senators. Uh, But they took care of business in this game. And one thing they've done in their last three games, go back to the Tampa game where they scored two minutes and 22 seconds into the game. That was Bobby Brink opening the scoring in that 6-2 win. Uh, They did it against Washington. They scored, I think, a minute, uh, about a minute 30-something into that game. That was Bobby Brink again. They ended up losing that game 5-2. And again, they did it again last night. They get a goal very early in the contest. And they get a goal just a minute eight into this game when Joel Farabee redirects a Nick Sealer shot uh, and is able to get the goal and put the Flyers up one to nothing. It is Farabee's 18th of the season. And Sealer does a good job, first and foremost, of finding the lane to the net. And the thing I liked about the goal the most was that it wasn't just Joel Farabee that was around the net. It was not one, not two, but three flyer forwards are all converging on the blue paint. Now, the goalie they played against last night, it wasn't Jonas Corposalo. It wasn't uh, Forsberg. It was a guy named Mats Sogard. Now, he is a Danish goaltender from Aalborg, Denmark. We don't see a lot of Danes in the NHL. He was taken in the second round, 37th overall in the 2019 draft. And here's what I'll tell you about Mats Sogard. He is enormous. 6'8", and he is a giant in the net. He does not show a lot of twine when standing there. He is massive. And the Flyers do a good job here of crashing down around him. It's something that we talk about quite a bit, like we go back to that Ranger game, the 2-1 loss, a week ago yesterday, where I felt like they didn't put enough traffic around Igor Shosturkin in that game. In this game, and on that first goal in particular, the Farabee goal, his 18th, Flyers put a ton of traffic around them, and that is a good way to start. So Flyers get the goal. They open the scoring. They really dominated the first period. The shots were 19-4 to in the first period, and I thought it was so interesting 
because as I'm doing the first intermission report, I'm seeing on social media, and I know I don't, I'm not judging everything on social media. If I did that, I'd be insane. But you see the dichotomy of Flyer fans. I see some people posting, what a great period by the Flyers. They're up one nothing, looking to bounce back after last night. They dominate the period. They outshoot their opponent 19-4. to Woohoo! way to go. And then the other end of the spectrum is Flyers get, they outshoot their opponent 19-4. to They have three power plays, but they only come out of the period up one nothing. Uh, it's kind of the half full, uh, is the cup half full or half empty kind of thing. But ultimately, it takes 60 minutes to win a game, and that's exactly what it took in this one. Uh, but 404 into the second, you got some pushback from Ottawa. And you thought there would be. There's a lot of pride over there, whether it's, you know, Thomas Shabbat or Brady Kachuk or Claude Giroux or Vlad Tarasenko, you know, all these guys. And they push back, and Tarasenko gets a goal at 404 into the second period. And I thought it was interesting because Felix Sandstrom gets the start. He only sees four shots in the first period. So it's obviously not a heavy workload. And the team's on the power play three times, not a lot of zone time either. But he makes a save for his the fifth shot of the game from Ottawa he makes a really good save. And then the next one, the sixth shot goes in. It's Tarasenko. It's a backhand. I think it's deflected on its way in. I thought he gave up a little too much on the short side of the net. And we'll hear from Felix Sandstrom in just a moment because I had a chance to catch up with him after the game. Um, but Tarasenko gets them on the board. He's a great scorer. And now you've got a tie game. But and it looked like the Flyers are going to the intermission Ottawa carried a lot of the play in the second period. I thought Sandstrom settled in beautifully after the Tarasenko goal. As a goaltender, you need to have amnesia. You need to have the ability that when you give up a goal, you don't let it bother you long enough to to affect your ability to make another save mentally, to stay mentally strong, to go, okay, can't do anything about that, got to move forward. And Sometimes that takes literally the amount of time it takes for the ref to pull the puck out of the back of the net, announce the goal, and drop that puck at center ice. Because they could be right back on you. So Felix Sandstrom, I thought the rest of that period was excellent. Really made some big saves for the Flyers and keeps this a tie game. Doesn't you know send you into the third period trailing. But as the waning moments come down in the second period, we're thinking, okay, it's going to be 1-1 after two periods of play. Be a game where win a period, win a game, tie a game, just go out there and take care of business in the third. You can come away with the two points. Well, that Tyson Forster had other plans. At 19-13, off a of face-off play, Scott Lawton wins the draw back to Forster, and everybody converges again to the middle on Matt Sugard, this enormous Danish goaltender, take away his eyes, and the 6'8 goaltender made himself about five foot six because he's trying to find the puck. So Sugar goes down, takes away the bottom third, and scrunches his body as small as he can and makes himself way smaller than 6'8". And Tyson Forster is able to beat him high and get the goal. And the only reason he makes himself small is because of all the traffic and he's trying to find a lane and he's going low to look. I mean, I don't know why 6'8 goaltenders just don't stand up a little bit more. They can see over everybody, but the puck's on the ice. So you'd be looking down at it. So you get low to try and find the puck and track it in. But anyway, Forster picks up his 15th. All right off the draw, gets the puck. He shoots. Something I've been asking for for like crazy. And, uh, and he is starting to do it. So that puts the Flyers up 2-1 to one in the game. And then on the same shift, Tyson Forster is able to then get behind the Ottawa defense. Again, that goal happens with 47 seconds left in the period. The one his 15th of the season to give the Flyers a 2-1 lead. Then he gets behind the defense and is is kind of hauled down. I thought he got a little bit of a shot off, but he gets hauled down, and it's a penalty shot. The Flyers coming into this game last night, four for four on penalty shots this season, which ties an NHL record, if you can believe it. So they get their fifth penalty shot of the season. With two seconds left in the period, Tyson Forster goes in on Sugard, and just great patience by Forster head up, looking at the options, throwing different looks at Sugard, and then eventually he just pulls it to his forehand on that right-hand shot and just beats him low low glove side along the ice, and boom, Flyers now have a 3-1 lead on 
one shift of Tyson Forrester, his 15th off the shot, and the uh, shootout goal. Not the shootout goal, the penalty shot goal. I asked Tyson when he left the um, our locker room where we do the interviews from in between periods, the last time was that he had a penalty shot. He said, ban him. He's not a guy that's going to get behind the defense a whole heck of a lot. He's not you know, a stretch-the-ice type player. But here he picks up two goals and puts the Flyers up 3-1. to one. So we headed to the third period. And Ottawa, again, more pushback. But Felix Sandstrom, I thought, was excellent in the third period. Under a lot of pressure. Hasn't played an NHL game since last season. Didn't know if he was going to get this opportunity this season. At 18.02 of the period, with the goaltender pulled, uh, uh, Dom, uh, Thomas Shabbat picks up a goal. Broken play ends up right to him. Uh, goaltending, sometimes you're going, geez, are you kidding me? How does the puck end up tra- going right there to his spot? And I got no chance after they kind of whiff on a shot. That puts Ottawa within one with a minute 58 left in the game. They get the goaltender pulled again. It's a six on five. Hey, look, Felix Anderson was called on to make a couple more saves, made the saves, and eventually Cam York with 0.6 seconds left on the clock, got the empty net goal, his ninth of the season, unassisted, and the Flyers skate off with a 4-2 win. So good on them. Good on them. Um, it, it was They got good goaltending from their backup. They got a really quality performance out of Felix Anstrom, uh, a young player in Tyson Forster I thought was excellent in the game. By the way, I thought Bobby Brink was really good in the game too. He gets back into the lineup. Ole LXL came out. Cam Atkinson drew back in. And I thought that Brink – didn't show the ill effects of being scratched or not scratched, but being benched the night before in the third period. And obviously got an earful from John Tortorella. I thought he went out, pushed the pace. I thought he was more responsible and detail oriented defensively. And I thought he played a really good game. He generated some good scoring opportunities, had some nice passes. So I, I really liked the way Bobby Brink responded to what happened on Friday. And look, I know a lot of people go, oh, today's athlete, you can't yell and scream at him. Baloney. Bobby Brink, every player that gets to that level has been yelled at by a coach before. I think we got we take this thing too far. Like we got to treat everybody with kid gloves. Look, you can you can be demanding and hold players accountable. And sometimes you can say, What what are you doing? What the bleep are you doing? And you can get after them a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to terrorize them. But you can hold a player accountable. And I like that all that matters is how the player responds to it. And I like the way that Bobby Brink responded to it. And obviously, I loved the game of Tyson Forster. I thought he looked like he had jump all night. And the thing about Tyson Forster is this. So let's get into this player in Tyson Forster. Because I, when the Flyers drafted Tyson Forster back in the 2020 draft, which was in, I think, October, They drafted him 23rd overall. I remember this is now we're dealing with the pandemic and this is after the bubble. They had the draft real quick. And then, you know, we were beginning preparations again for another season already. So they draft up Tyson Forster 23rd overall. And he, he had just played 62 games that year, the 1920 season uh, with Barry, where he played 62 games. Now the, the pandemic hits, he gets drafted He plays that next year. He plays 24 games uh, with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms in the 2021 season. And then in 21-22, he plays 13 games with Barry and nine games with the Phantoms. So not a lot of hockey. He's one of the guys that at that age range got had their kind of development paused, just like many other players that were drafted that same year and right around that. So you know, you kind of looked at the player and go, okay, he's drafted on the shot. And that's why he's a first round pick. He's uh, an elite shooter and all of that. And I remember talking to somebody, I won't say who, but uh, from the Flyers organization that said, we didn't think we had a complete hockey player here. We thought we had a guy that maybe needed to work on his skating. Um, We need to learn the NHL game because he didn't defend a whole lot at other levels in the OHL and he was a scorer and a lot of times, you know, guys with great shots and, and high level scores. And he scored 36 with Barry in 1920 in those 62 games. You got to teach him how to play away from the puck. You got to teach him how to play in the other two zones, the neutral zone and the D zone, because 
they, they're scorers and they just never really had to learn those elements of the games at, at, other, at other levels. And certainly not to the detail that you need to know it at the NHL level. But what they have found with Tyson Forrester is that when they brought him up last year, to some degree, and they saw last year in his, you know, games with the Phantoms, and there was some teaching that went on there with Ian LaPerriere, that he is a player that is much more complete than they they even thought. And we're seeing it now. Like we, we see Tyson Forster in the beginning of this season not putting a lot of numbers up, not putting a lot of goals up. And we're going, where's the offense? We thought we thought we could definitely get the offense from this guy. But you do see, and you look at his underlying numbers, the ability to defend in the neutral zone, in the D zone, his ability in board battles, how good he is with his stick in those board battles, how willing he is to go there and have those battles and be the first guy to a, a race for the puck even though he's not the fastest guy in the world. And you see that you have a much more complete hockey player. And then you go, well, if you can add kind of the, the promissory note of what he was drafted on that shot and scoring ability, then you're going to have yourself one heck of a hockey player. And we're starting to see that really come into its own. And I, I'm going to give the player so much credit here because Tyson Forster has worked his rear end off off the ice to put muscle on his body to, you know, be able to handle what it takes to play in the NHL and win those board battles. I think the eight games that Tyson Forster played in 22, 23 are so insanely important because he got a taste. He had some success in those games too. He had three goals, four assists, seven points in eight games. And to me, those eight games, as great as the seven points are to show that you can score in that league and that stuff, the real advantage of those eight games is that he was able to go into last offseason knowing what it felt like to play in the NHL. And because he knew what it felt like to play in the NHL, he stayed in Philadelphia and worked his butt off in the gym and put on a lot of muscle, worked on explosiveness in his skating worked on all those things so i don't want to say this is just the the natural development of an athlete that has god-given talents no there was a lot of hard work that went into it for tyson forster too so for that part of it good on him he deserves stick taps for that and that should be recognized absolutely now tyson forster since he came back from the injury and look we didn't know what he was going to be when he came back. We didn't know the the extent of how long it may take him to find his game. But since he's been back, he has been excellent. Now, since he came back, he has now played in, let's see here. He's played in the 24th was his first game back against the New York Rangers. He's got now six goals in five games and an assist. So seven points in the five games. Really good numbers. And really performing well. It's not just the numbers, too. It's the eye test. And since he had two goals back on that game on the 27th of January until this night, this or till last night, I should say, it's easy for me to say, uh, he's been really good. Two goals against Boston. He had a goal against Winnipeg. He had a goal against the New York Rangers, Fires' only goal in that game. He had two goals and an assist against the Pittsburgh Penguins. He had a goal in the Tampa Bay game. Didn't have anything against Washington, and then had the two goals last night. In nine games, he has now got nine goals and an assist. And he is playing just about 17 and a half minutes of ice time a night. That's a great sign. That really is a great sign. And here's why. A lot of times athletes, when there's pressure, they react differently. Some athletes at all levels. When there's pressure, that they're they kind of buckle. They're not as good as they are in the regular season, or they're not as good as when there's no pressure. Sometimes it's the opposite. Some guys are nice players, but when the pressure's on, they're even better. Look at the general manager, Danny Briere. Very good NHL player. When the pressure was on, the lights were the brightest in the playoffs, he was even better. He went to not just one level higher, multiple levels higher. 
And for a young player like Tyson Forster, at 22 years of age, and just turned 22 44 days ago, for him to be able to start putting this in, in his identity trait, that when things get tight, when you're in a playoff race, that he's going to raise the level of his game, that's a fantastic sign. Fantastic sign. And he is really showing something here in what is technically his rookie season, but he's really showing something that he's a player that is a complete player at a very young age. Not totally complete. He still has work to do in a lot of areas, but he's showing a willingness, the hockey IQ, and he's much further along in some of those areas where he usually takes players a little bit longer, especially shooters, to come. So Tyson Forster, fantastic performance last night. Been great since he's been back. Keep shooting the puck. Love it. Let's get to our feature interview, though. I've gone on long enough. Let's get to Felix Sandstrom. I had a chance to catch up with the Flyers goaltender after the game. Flyers post game uh, after a win over the Ottawa Senators were the Flyers goaltender, Felix Sandstrom. Boy, you battled your ass off in that entire game. Did you, it was that way you, you kind of wanted to tackle it? Yeah, I mean, just get out, go out there and have fun and uh, just battle. Uh, I know what I can do, so I just let go and just, just play. And the guys did a great job in front of me, blocking a lot of shots too, making it easy for me. So uh, just an awesome win by the team. Talk about that, you know, four minute double minor that you guys have to kill off. You had to make some several saves there. You mentioned some of the blocks. Nick Sealer, no surprise there that he's blocking multiple on that. But that's the game really hanging in the balance there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, just the momentum we get from killing that and like the confidence is, uh, is huge. So uh, it's so important to get one of those uh, <laughs> on our side. There. So uh, great job. And that's that will lead to the victory, I think. This is a cruel game. You know, Tarasenko at the end there flubs a shot. It goes right to Shabbat, and they end up getting within one. But the battle you had in the game for the entirety, what does this do for your confidence going forward? Yeah, I mean, it's huge for just something to build on. And uh, it's uh, I've been fortunate to play a lot lately in, in the ice, so I felt felt ready and body feels good. So uh, I, was, I felt really ready for this uh, challenge. And... Uh, it was fun to be out there and play at home with the crowd and everything. It's, it was it was awesome to be back there. Sometimes you second guess, you go, am I going to get this opportunity again? It's been, you know, this is the first NHL game you've had this year. When you got the call up, does that excitement kind of take you right away? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> to play within yourself. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're just trying to focus on what you can do to uh, to improve. And that's what I, where my focus has been this year. Uh, I mean, I was on the side for a bit there in the beginning and. Uh, been been getting into more games lately, so uh, I mean, you just gotta find a way to uh, to get better every day, no matter what uh, the day challenges with. So uh, it's uh, it's it's really fun to be here. So, uh, do me a favor, go celebrate with your teammates. Great job, yeah. thank you. All right, there he is, Felix Sandstrom after the win over the Ottawa Senators. We'll see Sam Harrison probably go Monday night, tomorrow night. Um, and uh, we'll see how the goaltending is divvied out. Good performance from Sandstrom. Gives the coaching staff some confidence, something to think about. All right, Flyers will be back tomorrow. They'll take on the St. Louis Blues. Bill Meltzer will join us for his Monday weekly visit. So join us then, coming up tomorrow on a brand-new Flyers Daily.